am a partner and development manager here at Storagecraft Asia Pacific for the uh, Australia and New Zealand regions. And today the demonstration is going to be regarding virtual backup and recovery for VMware and Hyper-V environments. So today we're going to discuss uh, a couple of solutions we have for these kinds of virtualized environments. The key topic and what I'm going to be talking about uh, for the most part is essentially how we back up in the virtual environments and why our backup technology and the way we actually back up is superior to other technologies. Um, I'll also be going through a couple of other solutions that we have in our solution suite including Head Start Restore and, uh, and also our watchdog software as well. All of the, like these three particular solutions all tie in together um, very well to kind of explain how our virtualization solutions for backup and disaster recovery do fit very well into the virtualization space especially when we're talking about two of the most major um, virtualization platforms, which are Microsoft Hyper-V and uh, VMware. So I'm going to get into it now for you. I have a PowerPoint presentation here, and every so often I will be um, moving out of it and, uh, and giving a little bit of a demo of everything. So solutions for Hyper-V and VMware environments. Of course, StorageCraft is the number one disaster recovery solution for both physical and virtuals. It enables, of course, everything that you can see there. Um, so today we're going to be talking about how we back up at the virtual level in the beginning. So essentially, we are a guest OS-based backup, which means that unlike a lot of other technologies that will sit on the hypervisor, we will actually sit in each individual virtual guest. So, um, and I guess... If you're looking at a traditional hypervisor-based backup, in which case you've got a backup software sitting on the host, pushing out temporary services onto the um, virtual machines, the virtual guests, and doing snapshots in that way, a couple of things to, to kind of consider is, first of all, where are all the disks? I mean, when it's performing the backup, does the host know where all the disks are associated with each VM? Can it tell whether or not they are iSCSI or fiber channel ones or how many there are there, how they're connected, etc. Um, it's, it's very hard for a service that's pushed out from a hypervisor or a host-based backup technology to actually get into the deeper details within that machine. Um, also, what type of data does the guest contain? Is it a domain server? Is it a SQL server? Is it an exchange server? Um, the host has real, no real way of knowing that information. Also, how busy is the guest? What is the performance of it? Is it under some kind of heavy load? If it is doing a lot of processing at that point in time, pushing the backup service onto that machine could it potentially have a negative impact on the actual snapshot that is taken. So um, if we're looking at host-based backup technologies, there's a couple of different ways that they do perform the backup. The first one is, of course, the backup of the virtual disk without any interaction of the guest, just backing up the underlying virtual disk. Um, the, most, the most common one you'll probably see out there is the backup of the guest with the temporary service, which is the backup technology sitting on the host when it wants to take a backup. A temporary little service will be pushed out onto those servers to take the backup. It is a bit better than the first method, but it still provides very limited data integrity because, as, as I mentioned before, if you don't have a backup technology sitting on the guest, it, it can't really get into the deeper implications within that guest to take a clean and consistent backup. And of course, a backup of a guest with a temporary service that has extra credentials, which would provide even further integrity, but usually results in much slower backups. Um, and the performance would therefore be more consistent with an older file-based backup technology. So there's a couple of challenges, as you can see here, with the host and the hypervisor-based backups. And, and I mean, in terms of these kind of backup technologies, they do have a great way of marketing themselves. I mean, let's face it, it's... It, does, it does seem easier, I mean, or you don't have to put it on all the guests, you can put it on the hypervisor. But at the end of the day, um, if, it's not an, if there's no integrity in the backups, then it doesn't matter how easy it is, if you're not taking clean and consistent backups, there's no point in backing up. So forget how easy it sounds and how much, and how much time it's, you think it's going to save you. If the backups aren't working and you're not getting the, the, uh, the integrity there, then of course that's going to pose an issue, not just in the present, but in the future. So now we're going to look at the way we back up at the guest level. So I guess the advantages from our perspective would be that a fully guest-based backup does know all about the guests. Of course, we've got the Shadow Protect agent sitting on the virtual machine, each individual virtual guest. 
Also, for those of you who've used Shadow Protect before, you'll know that, um, first of all, it's a very small download. It's very low in CPU usage and intensity, especially if you're performing continuous incrementals. Because if you're doing sector-based backups every 15 minutes or half an hour, the changes to the disk sectors will be so small that the backup is going to be small, and the impact on the virtual machine is going to be next to nothing. Of course, another advantage, and this is probably the biggest advantage, I would say, is that because we're sitting at the OS level, we have full integration with Microsoft's Volume Shadow Copy Service, or VFS, on each of these guest machines. Of course, the reason that is so, so important is for VSS aware applications like Exchange, SQL, and SharePoint, some of the most critical databases that you have within a business. Because we're able to directly communicate with VSS in every single guest, we can accurately quiesce or pause all the databases just before the snapshot is taken to ensure clean and consistent backups pretty much every time. And that's a, that's a huge advantage of a guest-based backup. And of course, we perform a single backup for backup and recovery and restoration and replication. So one thing you'll notice is that Shadow Protect, we don't have um, we don't have a lot of different um, like we don't back up in the VSTs, VMDKs, or anything like that directly. We have tools, of course, of migrating to those kinds of formats. But we back up in Shadow Protect full images and Shadow Protect incrementals across the board, which means that whatever you're doing, the Shadow Protect in image is always going to stay the same meaning that it's a lot easier to actually restore to and from different things and do a lot of different processes because you don't need to keep moving the, uh, the format of the files around. Of course, because of our integration with VSS, we do conform to the leading practices for the backup of domain servers, exchange servers, and SQL servers, just as an example. And um, because we're performing these sector-based incremental backups, of course, we're going to have smaller data backup sets. So um, there are a couple of different advantages of the guest OS-based backup, um, and it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, the integration with VSS and the ability to actually take clean and consistent backups, that's the main thing that I'd like to stress and the key importance of actually backing up at the guest level. Now, another solution for Hyper-V and VMware is a little something which we call Head Start Restore. And what that's going to do is follow this process. It's going to take the Shadow Protect backup of course, we're taking the backup, we're um, pushing it to our image repository, and our image repository where we're storing the images is ideally going to be managed by our image manager technology, where it will be verified, among other things. What is then going to happen is that image, with Head Start Restore, we can actually push this image into either a VMDK or a VHD, or even a VHDX now as well. So um, we can actually do this automatically. Every time an image comes into Image Manager, it will be pushed into the VMDK, VHD, or VHDX for use in a Hyper-V or a VMware environment. Um, and you'll, you'll notice that there's a lag time there. Of course, the reason there's a lag time is because this is going to push the images into here. If there is some issue with an image or if there is a virus, you don't want to push it in straight away. That's why, of course, there is a lag time there in between when the image is verified and when it's pushed into the image. But don't worry, because you can always add in extra incremental to this machine. So don't think that just because you're setting a lag time, you're going to be restoring a late machine. That is not the case. Um, and the reason that you want to use Head Start Restore to pre-push it into this virtual file is for two things, either for ultra-fast server migration. So if you're moving from a physical to a virtual or from a virtual to virtual environment, setting up Head Start Restore jobs for all of the servers and then just finalizing them all to spin them up into virtual machines, into full production. It's a massive time saver and pretty much allows you to do migrations with next to zero downtime. And of course, another use for this is simply for enterprise level disaster recovery. We do have technologies like Virtual Boot, which of course is great in a temporary scenario. But seeing that this is designed to be a full production machine, having the ability to do this is um, and getting it actually back up into production, it's very fast and it's enterprise level disaster recovery. So. Definitely something to look out for on the Hyper-V and the VMware front. So a use case here, for example, uh, like I was talking about, is if you need to migrate a server to a new virtual environment, but you can't afford to have the server offline for a few days to migrate the data, of course that's a big issue because downtime is basically zero productivity, you're losing money, you're losing value, etc. The Head Start Restore solution is that you can actually keep the old server running and generating incremental backups. and then. You begin the Head Start Restore job, it will sync those images straight across. And over time, as the Head Start Restore job, of course, catches up and fully syncs to the last incremental, 
you can actually shut the old server down off like out of hours, so at the end of the day, apply the final incremental to that server and then finalize the job, follow through another couple of steps within our recovery environment and you'll be able to finalize that job very easily. And that's in the full production as well. So that's what you can do for one server. If we're talking several servers, you literally just kick a head start restore job off for each of those um, machines and then um, once that's up and running, once they're all fully synced, you're pretty much good to shut the machines down, reboot the new one, and you're good to go. <clears throat> so that's Head Start Restore. Um, the final thing that I'm going to go through now is uh, Watchdog. And the reason Watchdog is important, of course, is um, it's a monitoring and management technology that we do have. Um, and if you're dealing with uh, Hyper-V and VMware environments, chances are you're going to be following a lot of machines. Um, and whether you're using a, a, a hypervisor level backup technology or a guest based backup technology like ours, you want to make sure that you're actually monitoring all of your servers as best as you can. Um, and now, I'm sure you'll be, you'll be familiar with this scenario, but um, if you're talking, if you are um, yourself an end user or if you're a reseller who talks to an end user, consider when the last time was you tested backups. And if you were to ask someone when was the last time they tested their backup, the chances are they, they've probably never tested their backups. If they have tested their backups, they probably did it at least six months to a year ago. And if you ask them how it went, or if, if you know how it went, you're probably not even sure because it took a fair while and the results might have, might have been inconclusive. So it's a very touchy subject, and a lot of people actually do forget to um, actually test their backups. And apart from, of course, being a monitoring technology, a management technology, a reporting technology, um, and you can view everything from the one pane of glass via Watchdog Central. Um, this also has the daily automated recovery testing, which is literally testing your backups and the recoverability of your backups. And you can do that every night, as many times as you like, um, and it'll pretty much do it with um, 2 a.m. with no user involvement, so it'll do it out of hours. Very straightforward. So let's take a look at our Exchange server. Um, and I go into storage craft job history. So the first thing that you're going to notice within uh, Watchdog is, of course, this is our Exchange server. To show you the power of continuous incrementals with Shadow Protect, you can see that we've actually done of our data volume 40,125 40, incremental images. So, so that's 40,000 images, and we're, still, and we're still good to go with this. So that demonstrates the power of the incremental backup. As you can see here, we've got the ticks. And the ticks, of course, display that um, this morning at about 4 o'clock in the morning, we've done the daily automated recovery test. Now, the daily automated recovery test is literally communicating to that server off-site, performing a mount-up of those images. We're going to perform a Microsoft check disk on those images. If the images are recoverable, the check disk goes through perfectly fine. We will then dismount that, and Watchdog will give you the ticks. Um, and that will happen every single morning, um, and it's very quick and easy to do that over the uh, wide area network, and it'll report back to Watchdog for you as well. So as you can see, very quick, very easy, and if you're monitoring a high volume of VMs, which if you're dealing with VMware and Hyper-V environments, chances are you are, it would be invaluable to use something like Watchdog to actually monitor and manage them as well. And this also, I mean, it also gives you the ability to remotely upgrade and install and deactivate Shadow Protect. You can create backup jobs. You can create destinations. You can literally do everything from within Shadow Protect and even Image Manager from within Watchdog and apply it to any virtual machine that you have. So as you can see when, you see when you're dealing with a large volume of machines, it's definitely a valuable technology. Um, now I'm just going to quickly going to show you one report as well, which which is definitely good in a virtual environment. Now we have a lot of different reports here. The one that we're going to be looking at is unprotected volumes, and the reason this is important is because in a in a virtual environment, people are often like spinning up extra servers, taking advantage of resource pooling, and basically saying, okay, I want another server for this, another server for that. And if they're doing that, you might not actually know that um, like you start monitoring with, with Watchdog, but you might not even know that the server's being backed up. So if you run this unprotected volumes report, you can see any disk drives within any servers that are being um, watched by Watchdog, basically. And if there are no backups, then you can run this report and say, here's a new machine. Obviously, there's nothing, no backup job for this. Maybe we should consider doing a backup job. So um, just one of the other different reports that you can have with Watchdog. Um, and like I said, 
lots of functionality here. I wish I had more time to go through it, but I unfortunately don't. But um, definitely a good tool for monitoring and managing large volumes of machines. Sorry. Um, and now I'm just going to quickly go through the last slide. So basically, just like to run you through the uh, the pricing. So because we do operate at the guest level, we do um, pricing in different pack versions. So as you can see, and we're doing Australian dollars here. Um, for a single virtual license to cover a guest, you're looking at about the 395 mark, XGST in Australian dollars. Three pack things get a little bit more cost effective. The six pack and a 12 pack is really where it's at. So you get double, I mean the three pack's 995, the six pack's 1295, double the six pack, it's actually 1895. So um, a great cost saving here. And if you look at this, I mean individuals 395, it can go down to as cost effective as $155 per guest if you go for the 50 pack. So it is affordable recoverability, it's a good investment. Now, the virtual service suite has further um, opportunities for you. So what this is, is it's basically, it provides six in one, it provides protection, recovery, replication, enterprise disaster recovery, server migrations, and testing, of course. Um, and basically what the service suite is, is you get the three pack or the six pack or the 12 pack, 24 or 50 pack of licenses. You also get 12, um, sorry not 12, whatever the pack is, you will get whatever number of replication licenses and whatever number of Head Start Restore licenses for enterprises after recovery or server migrations for this price. So if you're looking to back up and replicate and perform Head Start Restore on uh, some virtual machines, if you're looking at a client with say 12 VMs, you can do all of that for about three grand which means that for $250, every server can be backed up, every server can be replicated to an off-site location, and every server can have a Head Start Restore job ready, so that uh, in the event of a disaster, you can have a VHD, VHDX, or VMDK right there for them to perform a restore off. So it's a great proposition, great value proposition there, and the optional watchdog software, of course, for centralized monitoring, management, and daily automated recovery testing. Now, I don't have pricing for Watchdog at this stage because it has changed recently, but just to give you an idea, the 25-pack um, the of Watchdog Essentials, which will cover up to 25 machines, that's around the ballpark of about, I'd say about $500 to $600 RRP. Um, and the um, Watchdog Pro Edition, which is for up to 100 client access licenses to monitor up to 100 machines, is more around the 1,000, 1,000, yeah, I think it's the $1,000 mark. So, um, but if you'd like further information or pricing, feel free to get in touch with your reseller or distributor. So um, thanks very much for tuning in today, guys. I certainly hope you got a lot out of this demonstration. Thank you very much for attending.